I guess it's still good morning. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Sean, uh, for inviting me and the scientific committee. Uh, I always learn a lot when I come out. Uh, every day, uh, we learn a lot. I learn a lot when I talk to other people. That's one of the reasons when somebody invites me, I immediately say yes. Uh, was a beautiful place too. And so I'm going to talk about less invasive surfactant administration uh, or LISA. It goes by different names. These are my uh, disclosures. Again, if I get any honorarium, I donate all of them to charity. So the techniques of surfactant administration evolved from invasive, totally invasive to almost non-invasive. So in the 1980s, we did uh, by an endotracheal tube. Most babies got intubated, stay intubated for a long time. And then intubation surfactant extubation technique came. Uh, and now in the 2020s, LISA or less invasive surfactant administration uh, is commonly being used in outside the United States. In the US, about 20% of the NICUs are beginning to use LISA technique as routine management. Uh, it's still not widely used like in Germany or European countries where it is 70%. Uh, there's also in bigger babies, uh, laryngeal mask airway or supraglottic airway can be used. And then pharyngeal installation or hypo into the hypopharynx uh, has not been shown to be beneficial. Nebulization uh, of surfactant is truly non-invasive. However, it doesn't seem to work. I've been nebulizing technician DTPA in animals so big baby, it'll work. In small babies, it doesn't work. Because when you nebulize, as soon as it gets from the trachea, it pick up, picks up the water molecules and the mass median aerodynamic diameter becomes big. So it doesn't distribute into the lung. That is the reason nebulization is still not being uh, well uh, commonly used. Didn't know all that, okay. Let me get it out. Okay, so what is LISA? Oops. It's basically a technique that involves surfactant administration through a small tube, smaller than an endotracheal tube. That's LISA or MIST or LIST, less invasive surfactant treatment. Baby is breathing spontaneously on CPAP or NIPPV typically without any pre-medication or sedation. Now that we are so much into uh, pain, this is an elective intubation or a semi-elective procedure. So there is controversy about should we give sedation or not? And I will talk, I'll talk about um, our protocol. Uh, so it, it has at least 11 different names. NIST, minimally invasive surfactant treatment. LIST or LISA, avoidance of mechanical ventilation. That's from Germany. Surfactant without intubation, take care approach from Turkey, NINSA, non-intubated surfactant application, Sancho. So different countries, different investigators have given different names, but all of them basically means giving surfactant to a baby who's breathing spontaneously through a small tube, not an endotracheal tube, and no positive pressure applied to push the surfactant in. So again, Cologne method from Germany, Bobart from Australia, Aker from Turkey, Karolinska from Sweden, Stockholm, or Sancho from Spain. You can see 16 gauge angio catheter or um, four front GD feeding tube cut to 30 centimeters length. Um, McGill forceps, uh, if you are using a feeding tube, they're using a um, a shorter feeding tube, you may be able to intubate uh, with a, without a megal. Uh, it's not that easy in a small baby. Use a megal forceps. I don't use any of this. We use an angio catheter or LISA catheter. Again, the dose of surfactant anywhere 100 to 200 milligram per kilo. Pre medication. Some of them use atropine, uh, fentanyl. Uh, some of them don't use anything. Some use sucrose. So it's still nothing is standardized. So what are the major difference between inshore intubation, surfactant extubation versus LISA, or both of them require direct laryngoscopy. Need for positive pressure ventilation after inshore. Yeah, you want to administer surfactant, give few breaths, and then extubate. 
problem is after giving surfactant through an endotracheal tube, nobody wants to take the tube out. So that's one of the major reasons why Insure is not, uh, you will see Lisa has a better outcome than Insure. Relies on spontaneous breathing, um, ET tube versus thin catheter. Airway is secure when you have an ET tube. If you're using a Lisa catheter, you may catheter may slip. Yeah. Vocal cord remains abducted with an ET tube, whereas in, uh, during Lisa, it can get abducted. Sedative medications are often used when you intubate the babies, but it's less often used. And so called awake intubation is not a good thing. Taro will be better tolerated in babies over 30 weeks, whereas in extremely low gestation age babies, Lisa uh, is well tolerated. And there are some animal studies. Uh, what happened? There are some animal studies that showed that by um, Kaiser Bolin, uh, maybe the batteries. So Kaiser Bolin in preterm rabbits, he showed that lung association of surfactant and compliance, dynamic compliance with insure technique was less. There was a Lisa technique, she showed a better distribution of surfactant and improved dynamic compliance. So again, number of people have used number of um, devices to deliver nasogastric tube with a side hole or an end hole. Uh, just an end hole catheter, B, umbilical arterial catheter has been used, 16 gig angio catheter that was done in the Optimus trial by Peter Dorbel's group, Lisa cap, which is about 1.7 millimeter outer diameter compared to an endotracheal tube, which is a 2.5 millimeter diameter. So what is the evidence? Um, this is a systematic review published by Rigo et al. from Belgium, where they looked at six studies. Again, most of the studies were done in the European countries. Foract and Alpha is the most commonly used patent here. So nearly 900 babies. And they show that um, in this um, forest plot, uh, BPD among all babies, BPD among survivors, death or BPD as a composite outcome, early CPAP failures, any need for mechanical ventilation, all of them were less in the group of babies that were managed with LISA compared to insured technique. Uh, the only, are, and the, all the other morbidities like PDA, IVH, um, uh, none of them were uh, different between the two groups, as you can see, confidence in both class one. Uh, so fucking reflux is more common in uh, LISA group uh, because the, the vocal cords are not completely affected. And if you give it rapidly, you are going to see a reflux of the medication, gagging, coughing, and desaturation. That's one thing we have to be careful about. And there are ways to minimize that. So here is a pattern review. Um, okay, when you try to, when you decide to use uh, LISA technique, what the pattern should be used? Again, there's plenty of evidence to support that Corac and Alpha higher dose is better outcome than Viracant or Cervanta. This is death before hospital discharge. There are nine studies, about 900 babies, number needed to harm. That is, uh, if you are using um, Cervanta or Viracant, number needed to harm is 20 babies. So every 20 babies you increase one chance for death before hospital discharge. Death before hospital, we are using a higher initial dose of Hirosur is 16 babies. You prevent one death. Death or BPD at 36 weeks, again, nine babies. Um, death or BPD at, uh, um, if the studies use at least 100 milli, above 100 milligrams per kilo, seven babies. So clearly, if you choose, if you're going to choose a surfactant, for a better option especially given the smaller volume when you're using the LISA technique. So again, these are European consensus guidelines. I showed you yesterday about it. So the suggested protocol when the FIO2 is 30% or greater on nasal CPAP of at least six centimeters, you know, they used to say five, 
Now they revised it to six centimeters. And Lisa is the preferred mode of surfactant administration in spontaneously breathing infants. Level of evidence is B2. Uh, this is going to be published very soon, systematic review. I got this slide from Dr. Roger Shaw. Uh, minimally invasive surfactant administration or LISTA or MIST, 16 trials, 2,164 babies. Need for intubation within the first 72 hours with the LISTA technique. Number needed to is eight. Confidence interval is six to 14. So clearly, LISA technique decreased the need for intubation and mechanical ventilation in the first 72 hours. Second thing they looked at uh, was BPD, the effect of BPD. Again, number needed to treat is 14 babies. Um, if you treat 14 babies with LISA, you have less, one less BPD. Confidence interval is also pretty narrow, nine to 25 babies. Finally, they looked at death or BPD as a composite outcome. Again, number needed to treat is nine. Confidence interval is somewhere between six to 14 babies. So the clearly, there is a lot more evidence now that using LISA technique is better than insure technique. I saw another study from Amsterdam uh, where they looked at the uh, um, effect of uh, LISA and inexpectory lung volume. Are you able to recruit the lung post LISA? Uh, this is uh, 26 to 36 gestation, small observational study in 16 babies. You can see using, they used uh, thoracic uh, um, uh, the measurement they used was, uh, they used the um, umbilical arterial catheter to give LISA. Uh, Kiroserf, they gave, just took one vial, 2.5 ml vial and gave it to babies. Some babies got 160 milligrams per kilo. Some babies got 240 milligrams per kilo. They gave it over one to three minutes under direct visualization of the oral cards with a laryngoscope. Electrical impedance uh, tomography was used to measure end expiratory lung volume. Uh, again, they kept the baby supine at 12 degrees reverse Trendelenburg. You can see exchange in um, expiratory lung, uh, end expiratory lung volume. This is a uh, baseline here, end of surfactant administration, and within one, five, 30 minutes, within 30 minutes, you see a significant increase in end expiratory lung volume. They also measured the SpO2 to FiO2 or SF ratio. Again, a significant increase in SF ratio. So clearly, Using LISA technique, surfactant does get in, into the lung, gets very well distributed. It's again, spontaneous breathing is very important to move the surfactant down. Um, what are the factors that causes failures of LISA technique or missed failures? This is a study again from uh, Netherlands where they looked at uh, surfactant dose. The initial dose is less than 200 milligrams per kilo, for example, the failure rate which is defined as need for mechanical ventilation in the first three days of life is significantly higher. 86% of the babies got intubated compared to 64%. If the mother did not get antenatal corticosteroids, the failure rates are higher, 7.8 versus 19.6. CRP greater than 10 milligrams per ml in the first day, which means probably congenital pneumonia. So those babies also, the failure rate with, uh, is higher. Oxygen before mist, that means the babies are on higher FiO2 before you give surfactant, then failure rates will be high. So what can we do decrease mist or lisa failure rates? Uh, if the babies fail, they have a higher incidence of IVH, decrease survival and prolonged need for mechanical ventilation. So what can we do to decrease the, improve the success? You can use higher dose. You can tell the obstetricians to give antenatal corticosteroids. Even one dose is beneficial and zero dose. So LISA missed failure of 200 milligrams per kilo surfactant was 14% versus 35% if somebody had used less than 200 milligrams per kilo first dose. So this is a five year single center experience from Ankara, uh, Turkey, uh, where they looked at uh, 383 babies, 25 to 29 week gestation. Mean birth weight is about one kilo, mean gestation age about 28 weeks. You can see mechanical ventilation in the first 70 hours of life is significantly lower, 27 versus 42. Age at first dose of surfactant, they give it within two hours. Uh, BPD total or moderate to severe BPD was also significantly less in the LISA group. 
compared to initial. Again, it's an observation study over a five-year period in the NICU. They used the feeding tube with a megal forceps. Um, Insure was done through an endotracheal tube. Again, they did not give any pre-medication. Uh, here is another randomized control trial from a low and middle income country. Can we do this in resource limited countries like in India? So this study was probably, they included 350 babies uh, in Shure versus Shure, which is Lisa technique. They gave that uh, largest randomized control trial in three centers from India. So again, bigger babies, uh, 1600 gram, time to first dose of surfactant within one hour. Need for mechanical ventilation was the 19% with the LISA group compared to 40%. Duration of CPAP was also less. PPD was lower, three versus 17%. Neck, no increase, in fact, zero uh, compared to 7%. I want you to remember that. Um, one study, a database study from Germany, showed that babies that were given LISA had a higher incidence of focal intestinal perforation. And they have no good explanation as to why it happened. That's the only observational database study that shows that none of the randomized control trials showed any increase in necrotizing enterocolitis or feeding intolerance or focal intestinal perforation. Length of stay was shorter. Transient bradycardia or desaturation is much more common. 11% in the LISA group compared to zero. Again, they used a 16 gauge angiocatheter or a feeding tube. They did not give sedation in both arms. So it's a very good comparative study. And they ensure was given with the TPs. Uh, two neonatologists did the procedure in all cases. There are three, you know, three NICUs, Lucknow, New Delhi, and Hyderabad. So three different parts of the country in India. So there are differences between insure and DSA. Uh, there are differences in sedation policies, even in randomized control trials, variable thresholds for pressure and FIO will be used. Uh, insure technique is supposed to involve rapid administration of surfactant and rapid extubation, but it doesn't happen all the time. The first study by Gupta et al. from Calcutta, India, they did not give sedation. Surfactant dose and thresholds were standardized in both groups, Insure and LISA group. Uh, early rescue surfactant, within two hours they gave it. Majority of them got it in the first hour. It's so real insured with ventilation on an average of 182 seconds. So in the insured group, they took the tube out as soon as possible, within three minutes. That's one of the earliest removal of the endotracheal tube in the insured, in the randomized control trial that I've seen. They also used NIPPV in both arms during post LISA, post insure to improve pressure transmission in the airway is partially approved. So this is another study looking from Netherlands again, um, quality improvement assessment uh, using LISA without sedation, uh, less than 32 weeks, uh, 86 babies. In 48% of the time, LISA failed first attempt. In 34%, quality of technical conditions or intubation techniques were not adequate. When the neonatologist performed the procedure in, this, in their unit, first attempt was successful in 76% of the time. So they concluded and discussed in this article, uh, published in pediatric research, that use of atropine during LISA resulted in very low in bradycardia. I always tell my fellows, when they go to intubate a baby, their heart rate is usually higher than the baby's heart rate, right? And they put the tube in, vagal, Bradycardia, everybody's looking at it, nurses, respiratory therapists, the attending. Okay, take the tube out. Oh, they get nervous, right? So give them atropine. Babies are extremely vagotonic. At least you can decrease the bradycardia and it makes everything smoother. So I think we should use atropine, in my opinion. Very low incidence and should therefore be strongly considered. This is their own statement. Regardless if you're using sedatives or not, Success with Lisa may be improved with maybe improved sedative medication. But they didn't routinely use sedation in their NICU. So here is uh, another randomized control. This is a study from Calcutta where um, 28 to 33 weeks, bigger babies, less than six hours, FIO2 greater than 30. During Lisa NIPP, they used the RAM cannula. They used the PIP of 12 to 15, PIP of 5 or 6 rate of 40, 
post Lisa, they place the babies back on nasal prongs with the Draeger vent. 200 milligrams per kilo of Borac and Balfour Kiro was given. They used fentanyl one microgram per kilo over three minutes in both groups. Primary outcome was looking at the pain scale. Um, no difference in any other secondary outcomes. The pain by the babies assessment was uh, less than score of less than 10 was 76.5 compared to 35.5 in the placebo group. So clearly babies do feel uncomfortable and pain if you don't sedate them. So their recommendation is that you should consider sedation, at least in bigger babies. Uh, what do we do? So we are now currently, I'm conducting a 25 center trial, multi-center trial in the US on LISPAP study. This is what we do in our NICU. 23 to 26 plus six weeks, we give atropine 20 micrograms per kilo, about three to four minutes before we do the procedure. And then we do oral sucrose, 24%, 0.2 ml per dose at three minutes. The peak effect is about five to eight minutes. Um, if the babies are bigger, more than 27 weeks, then use atropine plus fentanyl, one mic per kilo per dose IV, three minutes before the procedure, and then we give it usually within one to three minutes. We don't give it as a bonus. Uh, peak effect of fentanyl is about three to five minutes. People have used morphine, but the peak effect of morphine takes 10 to 15 minutes. So I wouldn't recommend using morphine for Lisa. Uh, keep naloxone at the bedside in case baby becomes apnea to reverse the effect of fentanyl. I, I mentioned about um, complications. This is from the German Neonatal Network Registry, uh, published uh, online. Uh, they looked at um, 2,600 very low birth weight infants, uh, less than 1,500 grams with LISA, and then 360 plus babies with the uh, insure technique over an eight year period, 2009 to 2016. You can see that all of the out mortality, BPD, IVH, grade two to four, or ROP requiring surgery, all of them are in favor of LISA. Um, again, if you look at the um, um, focal intestinal perforation, odds ratio is 1.49. And uh, focal intestinal perforation, especially in babies less than 26 weeks gestation, happened 10% of the time with LISA compared to 7.4% with insure techniques. I really don't, even though it's statistically significant, I'm not sure whether it's the technique of LISA that contributed to this focal intestinal perforation. Overall, they had about seven to 10% incidence of focal intestinal perforation or spontaneous intestinal perforation of sick. The primary saw this in micro less than 26 degrees. Again, they've gone no good explanation as to why it happened. So this is what we do, you know, uh, here is one of my fellows, uh, second year fellow, 34 weeker, we gave atropine and fentanyl. I don't know if the video will play. Yeah. So we are also checking the uh, entire CO2. Put the uh, angio catheter or LISA catheter. And then this is the medication administration port, MAC. So we take that close to the syringe one, and then attach the um, uh, capnogram. And we were surprised to see change in PC color, color change um, with this. But now we have modified it. We just take a 3.0 endotracheal tube adapter, um, because you want to keep uh, ET tube ready in case baby le fails, Lisa technique, you want to intubate the baby. So we take the 3.0 adapter, it fits nicely into the LISPAP catheter, and then you can attach the entire CO2. That's another way of uh, confirming that the catheter is in the, that's an angio, 15 year angio catheter that we used in the Optimus trial. Obviously struggling a little bit. So because this doesn't have markings, uh, we put a tape so that we know how far to go. Um, six plus uh, one, the weight of the baby. So this is the first case where we verified CO2. We thought it won't work, but we were delighted to see change in the color. I just kept the audio. You know.
So it's a bigger baby, this one. Again, this was in the beginning. Now we attach the syringe directly to the angiocatheter, at least pap catheter. We don't have to have the extension uh, uh, tubing. Again, um, in our center, we use CMAC a lot because it's a teaching hospital. There are lots of small babies born. So we use the CMAC uh, when we want to help the fellows doing training, but it's not a requirement. Uh, we use the mannequin here. So these are the setup. You want to have the Lisa catheter. Again, um, this is an old one. Uh, we use this adapter, but now we use a 3.0 tracheal tube adapter to attach the Lisa catheter and surfactant just in case the baby needs to be back to mass. But in our case, we use the right cannula. Um, this is one of my colleagues, Dr. Biniwali, um, intubating the mannequin, premia. There's the Lisa catheter with the markings. So we insert one and a half to two centimeters below the ocal cards. Uh, just being a mannequin, mouth is open. You want to make sure the mouth is closed. These babies are on CPAP or NIPPV, and you want to make sure you continue to provide CPAP or NIPPV. So we use the, to verify that, but you could use a 3.0 adapter. And then directly attach the syringe with surfactant. And you could have a little bit of air in it so that when you flush at the end, you flush with the air, or you can have another syringe and flush the catheter um, with air so that no surfactant is left in the catheter. And again, uh, this is using the CMAC. I'm sure you're all familiar with it, so I can go on. And the other thing that we do, how do we know that the Lisa catheter is in the trachea? Three ways you can do. One is direct visualization when you're putting it in. Second, very famous the entire CO2. So sometimes the CO2 may not change color, it takes few breaths. Third, recently we started this um, ultrasound. So the same ultrasound probe used for lung ultrasound or line placement, you can put it in the suprasternal notch. You see one of the neonatologists there, putting the ultrasound uh, probe there. That's my fellow with the CMAC getting ready to intubate. My respiratory therapist and my nurse, they're all, everybody's watching. I don't know what happened with the video. I guess it's going slowly. Okay. Oops. Okay. So, sorry, the video didn't play well. As I mentioned, um, this is again a study from German Neonatal Network. The use of LISA is gone up quite a bit in 2016 compared to 2009. Uh, endotracheal tube surfactant use also has decreased. The number of babies not getting any surfactant also is down. So, more and more babies are getting surfactant using the LISA technique. And again, yesterday I talked about the FIO to threshold. So they're using to give surfactant to get the maximum benefit. And it is an observation study from Spain, looking at um, 108 babies and they showed less IVH, intraventricular hemorrhage, number needed to treat is five, need for mechanical ventilation with the LISA technique is significantly reduced in their NICU, just like in the randomized control trials. So there are problems with LISA, and there are solutions to that. So bradycardia desaturation, you can minimize that with atropine and fentanyl. In the European countries, propofol is used very commonly. In the US, it's very rarely used in the NICU. Anesthesiologists use propofol, but not in the NICU. Very, very few centers use propofol. I don't use it. There's some studies that show that maybe neurotoxic, so we don't like it. 
but ketamine has been shown to increase the risk for apnea. We don't use ketamine in babies. Leads the failure of first attempt, sedate them based on the quality improvement study. Uh, depth, how far do you do it? 1.5 centimeters if the babies are less than 27 weeks, two centimeters for all others. You have markings on it. Uh, that's the protocol Melbourne group used, Dr. Peter Dorval. Dislodgement of catheter. You want to make sure the catheter is still there. So sometimes if you're in doubt, you can again look at the laryngoscope and make sure the tube is in, or you can put an end tidal CO to check, or you can do the ultrasound probe, make sure that uh, is quite easily visible in the trachea. And when you're giving surfactant, you can also see surfactant going down through the LISA catheter. The reflux is a smaller caliber catheter, like the LISA catheter or angiocap. Great, how fast do you give it? Half to one ml per minute is the recommended rate of surfactant administration. It should take two to three minutes. There's really no rush. Uh, you don't want to put in a pump. That we you know decreases distribution. Um, small volume surfactant have less chance for reflux. Uh, reverse tunnel number, 12 to 15 degrees. Uh, repeat lease of procedure. If you have to repeat the way um, surfactant administration, we know from studies the number of babies requiring a second or third dose is significantly less. If your first dose is 200 milligram per kilo of kerosene. Improving post-LISA success, we have shown that post-LISA, if you keep them on NIPPV, chance of baby getting intubation is much less. So that's what we do. So I think LISA is here to stay. It's no longer just a fashion. So there are some unresolved issues, as I mentioned throughout my talk. There are no standardization or indication of surfactant or sedation or pain medication. Lack of using similar treatment protocols around the time in both groups. Three or a few studies enrolled babies less than 29 weeks. Lack of ongoing using one device or a catheter for LISA. People have used multiple, like feeding tube, umbilical arterial catheter. So we are, our study that we are currently conducting uh, will standardize in both cases. We encourage the use of sedation and analgesia. Again, we encourage them. If the centers choose not to do it, then they should not be doing that in both groups, Lisa and in Shulong. Um, we, we recommend, may consider uh, NIPPD, pre and post surfactant administration. We also document saturation changes every minute. Um, and to see what happens with the uh, uh, desaturation episodes. Um, this is the multicenter randomized control trial in the US. Uh, it's in the clinical trials talk now. Uh, we use the LISA catheter that has markings on it, you can see. Um, on NIV support could be CPAP or NIPPV. FIO2, again, 30% or greater to maintain saturation between 88 to 95. Sample size is 150 patients, two to one, 100 babies on LISA, 50 babies on Insure. And hopefully um, in a year, next time when I come, I will have some results to show. Thank you so much for your attention. And that's probably my last